Hey harmonica friends, it's Drea and I am back with another lesson. Uh, sorry it's been so long. I'm in school full time and working full time and ended up coming down with an illness so I'm getting over that. Um, it's pretty bad um, but I am on the mend so with my newfound energy and midterms behind me as of today I decided to Get a little something out for you. Um, thank you so much for all the new subscribers. Uh, you are what keeps me going. Um, yeah, I love y'all and I'm glad to hear that people are learning stuff from me. Um, I have gotten some nice comments, feedback, and suggestions which I have um, decided to take some of y'all's uh, suggestions. Um, let's see, I had a question as to how to do vibrato. I think I may have touched on that in the past. I need to go through my old lessons again, um, but I will reiterate that a little bit. I also have a little bit of an announcement and I want to go over uh, single notes um, with the tongue, which will be the introduction to tongue slapping, um, tongue blocking with the harmonica. I have a C harmonica as usual. And um, I also want to say that I went ahead and got a whiteboard. That was someone's suggestion. I've never been so excited <laughs> to buy a whiteboard. Actually, I don't know if I've ever have, but I was totally like, woohoo to my roommates. Oh, look at this whiteboard I bought. And I was totally psyched about it. So I have that. Um, I'll grab that if I need it, if I have enough time. But anyways, first of all, announcement. I will be, um, it's official that I will be part of the Midwest Harmonica crew for the Hill Country um, Harmonica Weekend Workshop, which will be in May 2018. And I will be there. Uh, they're paying me to get there and everything. So it's not like with spa when I ran out of money and couldn't make it. Um, so I'm very excited about that. More details to come. S tickets will go on sale on um, on the 1st of November. So there's going to be a lot of great instructors being announced and performed. I also will be performing on the Thursday, the first day of it, which I believe is the 17th or 18th. Uh, so that's very exciting and good news. Um, I also am celebrating finally uh, seven years of playing harmonica. And so that's really cool too. Um, I love this instrument and I'm glad I can share it with you guys. But anyways, um, I will just get on with the lesson. So now... Um, oh, and I'll post some links, and as it comes closer, I'll, I'll be announcing this Midwest Harmonica workshop thing often. Um, it's uh, Midwest Harmonica, um, Hill Country Harmonica, and it's on Facebook. The website's not up yet. Um, in the next lesson, I will link that, um, or further down the road, this might be linked. Um, so I've talked about in the past um, how to get a single note with your lips. Um, and I don't believe I talked about how to get it tongue blocking, really. And I want to talk about the introduction to slapping. So slapping is basically getting the single note, but you are doing more of a movement with your tongue. I have a C harmonica. So that would be uh, the note of D. And now when you lip purse it, and then when I tongue block it, just two different ways to get a single note. Um, some people have preferences. Um, I am actually starting to really like tongue blocking. I started out as a lip purser. I've only recently, um, in the past couple years, began uh, tongue blocking and really started working it into my playing a lot, even reworking some of my songs recently to be tongue blocked songs because it's really cool because you can do things like this. You cannot do that by lip pursing. Um, so what I'm doing, I have the, the Flisco Tongue Block Trainer. Um, to get a single note, so just pretend like this is um, the harmonica because you know it's really hard to see in the inside. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, so lip pursing is just kind of like a, a fish sucking in 
or sucking in like a thick milkshake I said in the past. Now getting a single note tongue blocking is actually blocking those first three holes of the harmonica with your tongue and leaving space just for the one note. So it would be as opposed to So as you can see, I am blocking the harmonica with my tongue for the first three notes and blocking the rest with my face and leaving just whole, enough air for the hole um, just on the corner of my mouth. So, and now to slap, I'm gonna hit that note fast. So my tongue is gonna go and I'm just doing four hole draw right now, so that's the D. So to get it, you are going slowly, the way you were doing. So now to tongue slap, you're doing it fast and aggressively. So, oh, that sounds lovely. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, this is kind of a, a funny, funny thing. Um, there could be a lot of jokes made, but you know, I'm not gonna go there. Um, but you are slapping. I can't even do it without that, so. Now blow. C to D. Now all I'm doing is um, slapping it. So you are slapping with your tongue, slap, 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 as opposed to just slowly and then getting the note and staying there and sliding around. You'd be going slap, 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 So um, I have no idea if this is making any sense. Um, explaining what's going on inside your mouth is the hardest thing about teaching the harmonica. So thank you to Joe Felisco for inventing a little Thing like this to kind of try to show you what's going on. So once again, just pretend this is the four hole, draw, and then blow. All right, so that is the intro to slapping and you can go turn into flutter, which I just did, um, but we'll get into that further on down the road and pulling and um, going to other notes. So I just went up to the five hole draw for just a second. Um, so I just wanted to show you that, um, do a little bit of intro to tongue blocking. If you're not doing it already, um, I suggest that you learn both methods because why would you not want to, um, you might be partial to one, but I think it's really in your best interest to learn both ways um, in every way that you can play the harmonica. At least that's what I'm striving for. Even if I don't use it in my playing, I want to have all the tools in my uh, tool belt, so to speak, um, and then I'll pull them out as I need because, you know, you might, uh, just for a silly analogy, uh, you might always um, work on your Jeep, for instance, but you never know when you had to rent a car and all of a sudden you got to work on um, a Honda. I don't know. I don't work on cars, um, but you know, it might make sense to some of y'all. So <laughs> there's my silly analogy. Um, let's see. So I also wanted, I got asked um, a little bit about vibrato. Um, I, I love doing vibrato. I think I might reserve this for another lesson. I do believe there was one in the past, but I think I'm gonna go into that later. Um, and, cause I don't wanna go too long and I want to use my new dry erase whiteboard, um, which I have a little something for you. I wanna introduce you guys more to the 12 bar blues, what I'm talking about, and maybe with this whiteboard, it'll be a better um, visual for you. And then start talking about different chorus forms. Um, and I wanna talk about the, the most simple chorus form right now, which is the AAA. Now, let me go grab this real quick. 
So, haha, here is my whiteboard. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, so, right now, and I put a little thing there. Um, follow your dream, because you should. Because you only have one life, and you are you. So be you, be or else no one else will, and that's unfortunate. But anyways, <laughs> um, here's the 12 bar blues. Um, now, it is each box is representing one of the 12 bars, and now this is talking about musical bars um, in a song, which would repeat itself. So it would be one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, and so on and so forth, all the way to 12, and then it repeats itself going back to the one. Now, I didn't add this part on yet because I don't want to confuse people, and I have another color to represent just the basic 12 bar blues form. Now there's all different sorts of ones. So now it's going to be the one chord for four bars. And then on the fifth bar, it's going to go to the four chord just for two bars. Then back to the one. Then it flips to the five, the four again, one and one. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a little thing, a little uh, jam track from YouTube. It's really slow. Hopefully, you can hear it. That's one. I'm pointing to where we are. change. You hear that? Now we're at the four. Back to the one. You should hear that. So that is um, just another little representation of the 12 bar blues. Now um, when talking about soloing, there's a lot of different methods that people use. I kind of just go for it, but there is a method to some people's madness. And um, some people actually think of these things. So um, this is one of the things that I've seen in um, books. So some people like approach this really methodically, uh, mathematically, whatever. Um, so instead of just like soloing around the whole 12 bars and then going back to the one and just with no method or something, you would be doing what I'll say A. So A represents the first lick that you're gonna do. So the lick could be like, that was four, five, six, six, five, four. Um, so you would repeat that for the entire four bars. So are you A, A, sorry, this is hard trying to write upside down. So that's your A. And you would just do that and that would, you would just hold on one phrase for the four bars, and then you'd repeat it again when the four comes around, A. And then when the five gets there, guess what? You do it again. And then you go back to the one. Now you might want to go to another course form at that point, um, which we'll get into in the future. But I just wanted to kind of show you what that would look like. So for instance, just pretend, I don't want to play that whole thing again because we're getting long, mm -hmm. but um, some people like uh, would just do a warble. I've shown you a warble with four and five draw for an entire four bars. So 
So that's just pretend that was the one chord for four bars and be going to the four. So then it'd be. So then the five would come and you do the same thing again. Just kind of just building this tension and it gives the listener, it makes them want more and you're going to give them more. Hopefully <laughs> you should give them more or else people will get really bored of your playing and probably not want to listen. But, um, okay. So just to show you, just in case this is really confusing for some of y'all, I will demonstrate what is going on. Leave a little space. Now the four is coming. And like someone like a guitar player might be like, right there. And now we're gonna go to the five. I did a little tiny little wah at the end right there, the train whistle type thing. Now it's going to turn around and start back over at the one. Um, sorry, I just got like really close to the computer. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't hear the music, so I had to get close. Um, but that's the gist of it. So I just, you're doing the same lick. So I did warble space four chord comes warble space and that's when another instrument player might want to do a fill and then I went to the five warble train whistle space then the turnaround comes now the last bar could be a five or a one depending on what the person wants to do um, for the turnaround and I've talked about that a little bit and I could talk about it more and I will, um, but I am getting lengthy here. So I am going to sign off. Um, thanks again for the feedback and, um, more lessons coming at you and thank you so much for the subscribers. And I'm almost, wait, let's see, I like five, five fifty nine. I think when I checked earlier today. So that's amazing. Um, I love you guys. I hope you're playing so much harmonica that your lips are bleeding. <laughs> All right, don't, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just keep on the keep on and do good and follow your dreams and I love you guys. Thanks again.